Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. Today we are going to have a look at the technique for making a log cabin blanket. As you can see here I've made a small blanket for Layla's bed because I believe it's a good way to practice a technique doing it smaller. So I started with a square and then I added extra panels to it in different colors and I turned this blanket into a rectangle. Now when you start with a square and you add panels to that and you make your panels the same height each time, so the same number of rows, you will end up with a square. But I ensured by putting two rows on my longer sides and three rows on my shorter sides that my blanket turned into a rectangle. But I will explain all in the tutorial. So I hope you will join me and I look forward to showing you how to do this technique. Now for this blanket I am using a selection of five colours of Starcraft Special DK. There is white, silver, grey, cloud blue and aster. And Starcraft Special DK is normally a four hook. But as you know, I always use a three and a half. So use the hook that you normally use for this yarn. I've got some stitch markers, a darning needle and some scissors. Now I have chosen five colors and we are going to work sort of in a spiral. And of course we have four sides to do each time. And because I've got five colors, my colors will jump one each time. So that's why I chose five colors when you have, of course, only four sides. Now, obviously, you can do this with scrap yarn or with anything that you have in your stash. And of course, you don't have to have repeating colors. You can use this as a stash buster or a scrap blanket. So you just use the color that you fancy for each time that you change colors as well. Let's get started. I'm going to start with a fairly small square, but I suggest that you start with a much bigger square if you are doing this for a single bed or a double bed. So I'm making my slip knot, insert your hook, and I'm going to chain 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Then I am going to use this one as my, of course, my last stitch. So I'm going to do another chain. That's my turning chain. Then I'm going to yarn over ready to do my double crochet in that very last stitch that we had there, which was my 12th chain. And you do your double crochet. So we do that turning chain, but we just don't use it afterwards anymore. So this now here is the V of my first double crochet or my last one, if I come back. And that's the one that we need to make sure that we still use when we come back. So making sure that we don't forget to do it, I'm going to put a stitch marker in there. Then I am going to place a double crochet all along my chain. So just making sure that I am in the next stitch. There we go. So I've now done two double crochets. So you yarn over, you go into the next V and I go into the point there where those two strands meet. So right about there, that gives me two strands on the top of my crochet hook here and one strand underneath. Then I pick up the yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so you are going to do that all along the chain and you should have 12 double crochets. And then really to get started here, we are just going to make a square made up of rows of double crochets and of course we are doing 12 so each row should have 12 double crochets in it. 
Now it's not much to count, so make sure you count that so that in fact your first part of your log cabin blanket is correct. And as usual, that very first one always closes up for me, but I can manage to get in. Whichever way you can manage to get in is fine. We take it that, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're going to count. And of course, the stitch marker will help us because we are not counting the chain here. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Now we are going to do a chain as before. That's our turning chain. You now turn. And now you are going to do your first double crochet in that very first V there. So we skip the chain and we do a double crochet right in that very first stitch there. And once again, I am going to put a stitch marker in that V that we have just created because that's the first one or the last one that I have to use later on. And now again, a row of double crochets. We end the row with a double crochet in the stitch with a stitch marker, and then we do a chain again, turn and off we go again. Now we need to make sure that we have a square to get started with. So I'm just going to measure how wide my um, work is now, and then just do rows of double crochets until I reach that height as well. So now we are at that last stitch and because I've got the stitch marker in it, it's going to be easy for me to recognize it. But if you haven't put the stitch marker in, what you need to do is sort of tip the work towards you and there it is. Okay, so make sure you don't forget to do this stitch. Do use the stitch markers in, you know, in the beginning if you are not yet familiar with this way of doing it but it does help enormously to make sure that we actually stay straight and that we have straight edges on our square. So continue like this, as I said, until you have a square. And so I've done this stitch now. Now I am going to go and move my stitch marker up so that I don't forget to do that stitch when I come back. I will see you when you have your square. Okay, so I've done six rows and I think it's square. So let's just check. That's about seven centimeters and that's about seven centimeters high as well. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to remove the stitch markers and I am going to change color. So you don't finish your last stitch. So I'm going to just go back and go into the last two loops of my stitch and pull one pull through out. So this is just where I would have done the last yarn over and pull through. So this is where I'm going to stop. I'm now going to cut off my yarn and I am going to choose my next color. Um, I think I'm going to use them in this order. So we are going to start using the new color as if we were already crocheting with it. So just yarn it over and pull it through. And there we go, we have changed color. Now we are going to turn our square clockwise and we are going to be working on the top. So you're going to do a chain and then as close as possible to that chain, you are going to do your first double crochet just to get you started on that row. There we go. Of course, you'll have some ends to sew in as well. Now we are going to place double crochets all along the side here. And to be honest, it's going to be a good exercise. Um, you need to just try and find locations to put your double crochets just so that they're evenly spaced, that they're evenly on the line and that they're not too close together. So don't put too many. 
I don't think that each length here of a double crochet, for instance, needs two double crochets in this direction. So I try over sort of over two lengths of double crochets, I try to put three double crochets. Just see how you feel. You'll get better at it. Oh, that doesn't look, no. <laughs> see, so, you know, just try and gauge it, see what it looks like, you know, sort of straight away. Yeah, that's better. That was too big a gap there. Um, and just try and, you know, sort of put them in as best you can. This is good exercise for learning to put <laughs> double crochets on borders <laughs> on the sides of blankets. And look, now it, I, keep, I seem to be finding the spaces really well. So I am trying to go into the body of the side double crochets here, not always around it. Just I am trying to find locations into the body, but sometimes you can't do it any other way. And then at the end here, I do try and find that maybe it is it that chain. Yeah, it could be. There we go. So that I'm nicely on the corner there. And then you do your chain, you turn and you come back with double crochets all along the row. Now, in the beginning square, we did six rows. On this part here, I am going to do three rows. So every block that we are doing that is on the top and the bottom of the blanket, I am going to do three rows. On the sides of the blanket, because I don't want it to become a square, I want it to become a rectangular blanket, I am going to be doing two rows. Now, with all my explaining, I have forgotten, actually, that I should be putting my stitch markers here. And I should have put one in here, but I found the stitch. So if you are already used to picking up the that particular V here, look, this one here, when you come back, then it's fine to do this without stitch markers. But the stitch markers are there to help you to just recognize that stitch and so you don't forget to do it. So here we are. I have now nearly done my three rows. These three rows are the same width, of course, as my square that I started with here but they're only half the height. And this now gives us a rectangle, of course. So there we go. So now, first pull through, don't pull through the second time, just leave it like this. Okay, put it down. I'm going to cut off my color and I'm going to start the next color. So once again, I am going to pull through with the new color. There we go. Once again, I'm turning clockwise. And now I am going to be adding my stitches partly on this part and then partly there. So chain one. And then as soon as possible, you do a double crochet or as close to as possible and then you place your double crochets along the side here liking that. Okay, so chain one, turn, double crochet into that first stitch there and off we go. So if I was to turn clockwise now, I would be 
where I've been before. So as I'm only doing two rows on the sides, I'm going to finish here. I'm going to take up my hook and I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to change color. Then I'm going to pull this through. There we go. Now I'm going to pretend I'm actually doing this side and I'm going to end up here under this V here with, you know, that should have had the stitch marker in. So this is now where I'm going to pull through my new colour and then if I turn clockwise, I'll be doing this side here, which is the correct side to be doing. Pulling through this yarn, through the stitch, there we go. Now we do a chain and we do our double crochet and we are going to be placing our double crochets along the side again and another one here yeah, maybe I should have put that one on the corner there. There we go. Voila. So remember, you have to do three rows each time or uneven rows in any case. And then if you do want to make amendments, then make sure that you pretend to do another row so that you end up in the correct place turning your square or your blanket then uh, clockwise and then starting the new panel. Okay, so I've done my three rows, only half a stitch done there, cut off, got my new colour, pull it through, Turn clockwise, chain one, and off we go again. And this time I am going to do two rows and then pretend I did a third one and then go to the other side and do my turning clockwise and starting over again. And we will be working with colour number one again. So that's the white again and that will be here. So I've done all my colours once and I will then be sort of, you know, moving on to bigger panels. Okay, so I finished my blanket. It's the size of Layla's bed. It hangs down a little bit on the sides and I really, really loved making this. It was great the way I did the three rows on the short sides because my blanket grew more length than in the width. So that was exactly what I wanted to achieve a rectangular blanket. The last row, mind you, I did do three rows here and three rows here, just so that I would have a little bit of a side to hang down. And I finished it in just one row at the top 
a run row at the bottom because obviously I had to do this spiral thing and I had to um, do my next color but of course I just then did the one line and it was fine because this is a good size for Layla's bed so thank you very much for watching I do hope you will try this like I said it's a lovely size this particular size for you to try as a sample and why not turn it into a cushion cover or something like that um you've done the technique now so you might feel much more confident to use this for a bigger blanket as well Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!